Obi-Wan, what have you become? I am what they made me. All right, so pretty much this show, to sum it up really quick, Obi-Wan Kenobi is a show about Leia getting kidnapped. Uh, he doesn't do too much, I must say. He kind of just follows her around. I think a better title for the show would have been the Leia Playtime Hour. Uh, because she gets to have a lot of fun. She gets to run around all kind of goofy areas. Uh, well, <laughs> well, these villains just slowly run after her but never catch up to her. They do all the slapstick comedy, you know, where they're running and they like bonk their heads together like the coconuts and everything. But, oh, you know, so it's pretty cool in, in the sense that it's like a, like a babysitting show. It's pretty cool. Leia gets a lot of fun time. She gets to play around. Uh, they show Luke humping an igloo at one point for like 20 seconds. Let's not forget the main character, Obi-Wan. Because I feel this poster is a perfect visual representation of kind of the show. You know, there's Obi-Wan. It looks like Obi-Wan. It's got Obi-Wan's name. But really, it's just an empty husk of what used to be a Jedi Master. An empty husk with just a little bit of Darth Vader sprinkled in there. Just enough for us to get mad when he gets punk bitched out in his own daughter's show. Most of the show, Obi-Wan's just kind of a loser who doesn't want to do anything. And then about halfway through, he realizes what it means to be a babysitter. He sees Qui-Gon Jinn. And then you got Darth Vader. Where really, Darth Vader's only storyline is that he hates Obi-Wan, he's chasing Obi-Wan, and he wants to kill Obi-Wan. He can't get over Obi-Wan. And that's, he's kind of like a jilted lover, really, throughout this show. And, uh, you know, you love Darth Vader from the original series. Remember how powerful and cool he was? Well, get ready, because now he's just a clown. Literally, they gave him a big old red nose and everything because all he does is uh, lose. He does that a few times. The only character he beats is Reva. You got Anakin talking with his sand hating regular ass voice, hating Christensen. And while he's talking, it's like he's talking in one of those toy Vader masks and you just hear... James Earl Jones's voice doing it at the same time and it just is they kind of took away all the scariness of Darth Vader he seemed more in the original movies you know they got him as like this overwhelming presence you know he's like this big dark force but in this one he's just like he's Hayden Christensen they they built the bridge between whiny baby Hayden Christensen and then like big powerful Darth Vader and now you have this mixture of these two pretty different characters you, it, it's the duality of Darth Vader and I feel like they just kind of missed the hints you know they missed the they missed the goal on that one Reva I actually thought was pretty cool at first you know she was all brutal she was killing people left and right she fucking she took out the Grand Inquisitor. I thought she was brutal. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a nice change of pace for kind of, you know, the more family-friendly stuff. But then out of nowhere, you know, uh, once they reveal the twist that she was uh, one of the children Jedi that Anakin tried to kill, she just, she loses it. And she completely changes where she's like just brutal on this path to get what she has to do done. And then she starts questioning herself. She gets her ass kicked by Anakin and killed by Anakin again. And then she just comes back and she's crying on her knees. This character that was started out pretty cool. But they, they, just, they just ruin her. Uh, there's this great scene where she looks at Obi-Wan. She's crying and she says, have I become him? And Obi-Wan looks down at her and he says, no, my friend had conviction. Anakin would have never thought twice about killing anyone. You are nothing like him. And then they walk away. And right after that, I got, I almost forgot. They have the balls. They have the fucking straight metachlorians in this show to do a fake out death for Luke, who's not established at all. They introduce him at the beginning 
doing nothing, playing with sticks and rocks from a distance. And then at the end, they have him rolled out. He's, they, don't, they don't even show what happens. She chases him into the desert, and then she just carries him back, and they do a fake-out death for the main character of the next six movies, the son of the main character of the previous three movies. Something about that. It's just, it, I can't get over it. Why would you do a fake out death? There was plenty of, there's, they could have actually killed someone. They could have developed her better and then had her like sacrifice herself for Luke or something. I don't know, some shit. So I would say overall, Obi-Wan Kenobi, it's a show about nothing. Uh, if, if, if you were ever wondering, uh, where Leia got her signature fingerless orange leather gloves, this is the show for you. You're wondering where she got her gun holster, this is the show for you. Although I talk a lot of bad about it and stuff, the show is okay overall, but I just feel like they're going in a bad direction with this, you know, all the sets felt kind of cheap, the action scenes felt kind of cheap, there's something about the... Disney's buying out everything, becoming this super wealthy company, and then everything that they're putting out just kind of has this cheap look to it anymore. I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or if it's because I can actually see through it. But uh, yeah, I think I've rambled on long enough. Uh, this is my review about nothing, about a show, about nothing. That's all.